check out this awesome meeting space in the Upland Metaverse. In Upland, these are called cafes, and they're powered by the Nowhere Metaverse. I had the pleasure of speaking with Nowhere's CEO, John Morris, about Nowhere, Upland, its partnership, and the future of the Metaverse. When it comes to Upland, play, earn, and connect, Nowhere comes and fills this connect void extremely well. But what you'll hear in this discussion is how this connect aspect is intertwined also with play and earn. I hope you enjoy this discussion. So John, everyone knows about Skype. They know about Zoom. This was made very popular uh, because of COVID. Can you explain more about Nowhere and what your company is, your core vision, and how it competes with or doesn't compete with something like Zoom or Skype? Yeah, absolutely. Hi, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Um, so Nowhere is essentially trying to um, expand the capabilities of a Skype or a Zoom into something that feels much better and feels more co-present by adding spatial audio and beautiful environments. So often when you're in a Zoom or a Skype or a Google Meet, you're trapped and you don't have agency to move wherever you want to move and talk to whoever you want to talk to. And so by adding a 3D game engine on top of that, you and then separating the video out to video pods, you can actually have agency to move anywhere in the environment and talk to whoever you want to talk to with the spatial audio. And so what that adds is a level of memory because you have a memory of talking to somebody like we'll have this memory of meeting in this space, in this office space. And then we have the agency now to move wherever we want to move in this space and talk to whoever we want to talk to, which really opens up an entire um, feeling of a sense of belonging within an organization or within an event or a party uh, where, you know, you're much more empowered as a player within that video call. Yeah, when I jumped into this space and I was waiting for you and I heard you very softly off in the corner and then I had to really start walking towards you um, to really be able to hear you. So uh, when we're in a one-on-one -on -one setting, this is nice, but I can really see when there's a big party going on, then you know you can really move off into the quiet corner and talk to one or two people without having uh, 40, 50 people trying to talk over each other in, uh, in something like a Zoom. So this is, uh, this is really exciting. Um, how, yeah, how... exactly. We like to think of it as where, you know, we've all been in Zoom calls or Google Meet calls where it breaks down, you know, and you have more than, you know, once you get into like 12 people, you know, it starts to become like there's one person kind of occupying most of the space with their voice and everybody else is kind of stuck, you know, and, and where it really breaks down is the before and after the focus part of the meeting, you know where you know before you do a presentation and you're everybody's supposed to be listening to one person you want to have the ability to talk to whoever you want to and you see a friend there and you're like oh i want to you know ask them a quick question and here you can do that you can pull away you can talk to that person and then when it's time to gather people for a collective presentation you just all move towards the presentation screen and then you have a much more embodied experience much much closer to real life and then same thing on the end of that when the presentation ends and it's made you think about like, oh, I need to talk to, you know, uh, Stan about that um, thing that we were working on. Then you say, hey, Stan, come over here. And then you guys can keep that conversation going. That's great. Um, now, the space that we're in here now, this is the nowhere native space. But in Upland, we have Upland cafes. Can you speak a little bit about what Upland cafes are and how that's different from the space that we're in right now? Yeah, sure. Essentially, it's just a different 3D model. So um, within our world builder, it's on Blender. It's a, one of the most powerful v open source VFX tools that you can essentially create any type of model, you know, uh, that you want, you know. So we're in an office space. It feels very, you know, it's good for this type of thing. Great for a meeting. Um, the Upland Cafe was built for like a first um, experience of socializing you know, of doing presentations and having a community hub for people to start to gather. So, you know, the title of cafes, you know, I think it will be expanded upon pretty soon within Upland um, to wrap your head around, you know, like Left House's uh, movie theater where he is um, screening the other day. And then, you know, the sky's the limit of where that expands to, whether it's from personal homes to warehouses to, you know, sci-fi outer space wacky, you know, worlds in the future. Yeah, that's really, that's really interesting. Upland has said um, since the beginning of when they created 
uh, Spark, which is now Sparklet, and these buildings, they have said that players will be able to create uh, in-home experiences. So that is probably going to, I would imagine it would be something maybe like this. This is a nice villa, but, you know, completely customizable and players will be able to see, uh, you know, the legits that we own on our on our walls. Um, you know, if there's mm -hmm. internal design like these sofas and, and chairs as well, then everyone will be able to probably personalize their own home and have these types of meeting spaces as well. Exactly. Yeah, and we're getting really close to that. That's something that's going to be really exciting, I think, coming up within the next months within Upland is the ability to start to own your own cafes and be able to customize them, you know, by putting your own posters, uh, your own legits, um, your own 3D objects within that environment um, and skin them by different types of skins to go with those cafes and then be able to host all kinds of different things that you want to host within that. You know, whether it be a community meetup or, a, you know, a movie screening or a, you know, a, a podcast, a live podcast or TV show. So really the sky's the limit for the type of social experiences that you can start to bring once you have the, your own ability to own a, your own cafe. Yeah, one of the ideas that I had, I own a racetrack in Upland. And uh, when they released the cafes, what Idan had spoke about was having the ability for people to congregate in a cafe and you know, watch the races as they go by. So for me, it would be really cool to have that racetrack and have the property right next to the to the starting point be a cafe where people can come in and we can compete while racing and, and we can talk and we can see the races go by. So I think that that's something yeah. that's really exciting um, when it comes to, you know, everything about the Upland Metaverse, how it's really tied into this real world and being able to race around famous areas and, and congregate at uh, famous properties, that's uh, really exciting. Um, what, how is Nowhere bridging the gap between the virtual world, which we're in right now, and the physical world, whether it be as, as Nowhere themselves or also uh, as part of the Upland ecosystem? From the beginning, it really has been our mission within Nowhere to expand what we were working on within real life with a company called Windmill Factory, which I founded in 2009 with my um, co-founder of Nowhere, Anna Constantino. Um, and our mission at Windmill Factory was to manufacture sublime experiences. And so those were almost all in real life experiences, everything from you know giant concerts for Nine Inch Nails, Metric, Fantagram, to spectacles for AWS or Google, to public art installations. And when the pandemic hit, you know, all none of that was possible. And it really forced us to think about how we would create our work online. And that's when we really dove heavily into Nowhere to try to create a tool that we could create all the things that we were doing in real life. So concerts, uh, public art, um, experiences that really at the core of them to create these sublime experiences were about bringing people together. Um, whether it be a cultural event or a, you know, an art installation. And so at the core of what Nowhere is, is an expansion of that work into the digital um, realm. And now, you know, four years later, we have a tool that's quite robust in bringing people together in the digital space. And what's happening now with our company Nowhere and with the partnership with Upland is now that we have this core technology that's very robust, we have the ability to start playing around with how does this core technology interface with a digital event and a physical event happening simultaneously. And what tools can we have being intersecting those two events together? Um, and, and how does that pave a way towards the, the hybrid future, which is where um, most people see this um, metaverse world going in the future where you, know, you have a, a, a complete synchronicity between real life events and digital events um, that can be um, concurrent and happening at the same time. You know, so you have people in a real life event in Sao Paulo, you know, meeting with people who are digitally within New York. So we've started testing that out with, um, you know, live streaming events um, with New York Comedy Club where, you know, they'll live stream a live show from Manhattan into the platform and then the comedians will come from the green room in at New York Comedy Club, the comedians will come into nowhere and meet the global audience in nowhere. Um, and 
done a lot of that exploration within entertainment, and there'll be more and more of those um, tests and trials coming up in the future. Um, and a lot of those will be playing out, you know, with Upland and with other partners and clients that we have within Nowhere. That's interesting. Um, you had said, we spoke before, and you had mentioned that it was just less than a year ago that uh, Upland had announced this partnership with Nowhere, and the first cafe was introduced. In this uh, short period of time, can you talk a little bit about uh, how you've been working with Upland regards to how they've been helping you to drive innovation within your own company and maybe expose you to other ideas that maybe you weren't thinking of uh, as up as uh, nowhere the company itself? Great question. It is, um, I mean, we've been working really fluidly to with Upland. It's been great. It's been a really wonderful partnership. It's a win-win on both sides, um, you know, for us in, in nowhere to build for such an active, you know, great community as the Upland community. Um, it's expanded our technology towards uh, Ready Player Me avatars, which I think, you know, eventually we wanted to get to that point within nowhere to have that optionality between video chat and avatars. Um, so that kind of pushed that um, that technology. It also helped us develop a lot of uh, the mobile side of our um, of our core technology, um, and you know we did a lot of testing as uh, a lot of the community really helped out with within the initial cafe launch and you know getting getting better and better, um, and that'll continue to to evolve. You know as these you know we're kind of on the bleeding edge of what technology can do um, within these browser based you know metaverses, um, so. You know, I think that'll continue to get better and better and better. But I think the people who first dropped into the cafe when we first launched it to where it is now, you know, with the the onboarding, um, you know, uh, uh, community town hall uh, space where it, it's it's much more stable, it's much more accessible on mobile. Um, we have all kinds of different um, different graphic settings now that really support um, mobile users um, and. You know, it's really pushed us to think more towards, um, uh, you know, digital rights and ownership. We always wanted to go in that direction with Nowhere, but, you know, it, like both companies, you know, we, we both had directions going in the, in the direction that the other company had built, but we hadn't gotten there yet, you know, so it was equally mutual. Right. Exactly. That's what makes exactly. for a good Because there's only so much you can do, you know, within a, within your own bounds. And so you have to pick. And, you know, I think that's where... It really, it really works out well, you know, with the play, earn, connect is, I think that, you know, Upland had been doing the play and earn very, very well, and we're getting to the point of connect. Um, and, you know, the, the Nowhere offers a really unique opportunity for, um, for us to come in and help with the connect part, you know, and, and bring the community more together and allow them to do more, more synchronous events where people can be hanging out, you know, meeting each other and, and hosting all kinds of different things that will help uh, strengthen and bring the community together. Yeah, we can see this uh, logo behind you, Upland Play, <laughs> right. Earn and Connect. And you talk about each one independently. And yes, anyone can come in and just play and do car racing, or they can earn by flipping properties and, and, and uh, selling other things within Upland. And then there's the Connect, which really starts with what you said of these uh, nowhere experiences. But once you have each one of those three pillars, they're actually intertwined mm -hmm. together because what you had said to, to me is that, you know, once you have this space, you can uh, connect it to a meta venture and you can have mm -hmm. people shopping and you can have, as I mentioned before, uh, with the race cars. So you can play while connecting as well. So this is really an important pillar within the Upland metaverse. So what, what else can you maybe say about um, bridging the gaps between the connecting and the playing and connecting and the earning. I think that, you know, in the next, in the next couple months, uh, there's going to be a lot of opportunities for the community to start engaging in this way, you know, and if it's a, if it's a future that the community really wants and is really excited about these type of spaces, you know, to both earn and, you know, and play within, um, then I think, you know, uh, we're, we're going to be, releasing a lot of opportunities for the community to start to, you know, dive in and really um, start to utilize these spaces in really interesting ways. Um, and it's been a lot of hard work getting to that point. And I think um, it's about to get really exciting over the next couple months. Um, 
you know, in, in on the basic levels of just having these social spaces where you can do events, but also, you know, you mentioned experiences. And I think that, you know, that's where our unique background of what we were doing within real life um, will start to come into play over the next year um, within the, the partnership expanding. Um, you know, fingers crossed, we'll see how it, everything goes. But the more participation and excitement we get for the community in this direction, then the more it gives us both as partners confidence to keep working together and expanding the capabilities and and really going beyond, you know, just, you know, social events to really creating, you know, like the, the racing experience that you talk about is like merging those two together. So you have like, you know, the racing and gaming experiences, which are now siloed and with the social experiences, which are siloed, you know, and going to a future where those experiences will be, you know, more together um, and more integrated into a, into a, a much more fun and playable, you know, um, uh, experience for the, for the community. So I can't talk too much about that, but there's some really exciting things coming up in that direction. Yeah, you mentioned about uh, really how you got started before COVID with your previous venture and how that led into nowhere and bridging the physical and the digital. Now, when we have the whole concept of ownership and NFTs and whether it be uh, properties or other legits or 3D map assets that I could uh, create this chair that you can see right uh, off to the side here and put that in my home. Um, really the concept of digital goods, which is phys physical and digital. So having the ownership of this digital good and also cr having the ability to create uh, a physical item and connecting these two types of experiences, whether it be, you know, this uh, uh, this comedy club that you spoke of. And it just, you know, so much is going on in my head right now, trying to think <laughs> of all the possibilities and interesting things that can be done with, you know, both uh, the physical experience and the virtual experience and the concept of physical ownership and digital ownership. So um, yes, I, I, I think that there's a lot going on here. Help, help me unpack it. Yeah, I mean, I think that one of the big things that will you'll see that are that'll be starting to come in these spaces is the ability to, you know, make microtransactions, you know, and and be able to purchase and make money and you know and start to you know earn within these um, social spaces, um, you know, and see where that starts to expand from there. You know, and, and if you have the ability then to be gathering people within, within your properties, you know, you can imagine the type of things that that will unlock for the ways to make money within meta ventures. Um, you know, so that, that's, you know, that's a really important guiding, you know, principle for Upland within this partnership is, is really trying to find a way forward where these spaces are really helping the, the players in the community make money. Yeah, Upland is very much uh, an excellent platform for an entrepreneur. You can get started, you can buy a property for less than $3. You can, you'll be able to potentially build a structure and open up a cafe or a meta venture or something like that. And you know, you're off to the races. It's a very uh, small capital investment. And if you have an existing community, um, whether it be on YouTube or any other platform, and you want to create these types of experiences, um, you know, nowhere is a great space to do it. And also within Upland, because then you can really start creating your own communities by having people, you know, creating a node in a specific neighborhood in a city during a new city release. So it's an excellent way to really uh, show who's part of the community by virtual ownership, by verifying on the blockchain, you know, you do own a property in this neighborhood, so you're part of our group or you did purchase this map asset that I sold and you're now part of this community and you can get X, Y, and Z for that. So this token gating as well, which we didn't speak about, but that's uh, that's the next thing that I'm sure is uh, probably somewhere on your list of to-do items as well. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, within Nowhere Spaces, you can already token gate with a ton of different blockchains um, within the Nowhere Spaces on our platform. I did not know that, um, that's great. Is... So it's probably just a matter of time until that happens in Upland. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it, it's it, it is possible, and we'll see how we get to it um, within the within the partnership. Um, but that that also has tons of different possibilities. You know, from you know tickets to membership to you know access and 
uh, there's a lot of a, a lot of opportunity there for the future. Great. Well, John, um, I'm going to give you a last word here. If there's anything else that we didn't cover that you wanted to uh, mention to other uplanders, the stage is yours. Uh, I think it's just a thanks for diving in to nowhere. Um, it's really awesome to have this partnership, and it's really awesome to have uplanders embracing, you know, uh, nowhere and these social spaces. And we're really excited to be working with Upland and and the community. It's been it's been a great you know last several several months, and we really look forward to the future. So you know, keep hitting us up and keep you know uh, asking Upland for what you'd love to see in these social spaces and. Um, and we'll keep doing our best to get it, uh, get it in your hands as soon as possible. Great. Thank you very much, John. This was a great conversation. And uh, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what you guys have coming up next with Upland. Awesome. Thanks so much. Thank you.